So what's happening with our real estate market? Well, we're gonna talk to REMAX specialist Maria Raymer about what we can expect now and moving forward. So thanks for having us. Yeah, nice to see you again. You too. Thanks. So what exactly are you seeing out there right now? So what we're seeing is uh, longer days on the real estate market for houses. Um, we're seeing less offers coming in on those houses, so less multiple offer situations. Um, so in general, we see that part of it slowing down just a little bit. Okay. We're seeing a little bit more with reductions in the market. So that also tells you that it's, you know, dying down just a little bit. Yeah. So where do you expect it to go from here then? If, I mean, this is already starting to happen, is it just going to keep getting better and I don't know if better is actually the right term. Yeah, I see a more normalization okay. in the real estate market and I think that that's a key thing. Uh, people get used to something being a certain way, but the reality right. is it doesn't stay that way. It's a buyer's market, it's a seller's market, it does go back and forth. But in a normal market, a buyer would make a, an offer within three to 5% of asking price and with a reasonable offer on a property, a seller might meet them halfway. That's a typical negotiation situation. So I see more normalization coming back to the real estate market. But in, in seeing where we're at now versus where we're going, mm -hmm. interest rates are going up. So in general, that's gonna tamp down the pricing in general and people are used to very high escalation of pricing right that's gonna not be as much it doesn't mean a rollback or a crash in okay, pricing that's gonna be my next question yes and that's what's every on everybody's yeah. mind is it gonna crash is this the bubble um, we don't really see that the economists okay, are still talking a lot about this and we think it's just gonna slow things down as we would want to see happen but not necessarily does that equal a crash and the reason why is because the supply and demand is still kind of off. I mean, we are way low on supply still, mm -hmm. and the demand is still relatively high. So that's going to keep the market from going in a very bad direction. And that's the concern buyers and sellers both have. But I think there's a balancing act that's happening and we're seeing it all play out. Right. And so you mentioned, though, uh, that being one of the major factors contributing to this, mm -hmm. the supply and demand, what else? Well, interest rates going up so quickly is mm -hmm. another thing that's that's designed to cool the market. Oh. And then there's a reaction and a connection all across the board. If the stocks go down, investors get nervous, they back interest mm -hmm. rates and they want to charge more to level their risk. So everything right. is connected. But those rising interest rates are, are designed to cool down the market. And so that's going to have its effect as well. And I'm sure sellers are concerned, right? But should they still be optimistic? I think they should be, okay. and the reason why is because they're riding off record high appreciation in the last two years. The shutdown created that vacuum effect on the mm -hmm. real estate market and people moving and all of that. So all of that increase in the market is still there. It's still theirs. Um, but going forward, they just need to be more realistic about pricing, days on market, negotiations, right. because going forward, um, as things tamp down a little bit, all of those things are also going to change, but it doesn't mean that they can't get a very good price for their home, but they may start seeing modest appreciation, 3%, 5%, 7%, 10%. Mm -hmm. When you start talking appreciation higher than that, that's not typically a market that's sustainable for okay. any great length of time. Well, what about buyers? Are there, is there any good news for buyers when they're seeing these rising interest rates? Yeah, and that can be scary for buyers too, and I understand that, but uh, if the market does cool down, they'll have have a shot to get in. They won't have as many fierce competing offers where they're paying so much over market. So basically what will happen is the higher rates will help shake down the pricing a little bit. Right. So it should offset one another as, as this goes forward, the rates go up, but the pricing isn't increasing so quickly. Mm -hmm. And so that allows them to get a house that's a little bit more affordable. Imagine if you're bidding on a really uh, multiple offer or a hot situation, you could pay 20, 30, 40, 50,000 over asking. Wow. Take that away, you're still paying a good high price for the house, so the mm -hmm. sellers are happy and the buyers are glad not to be paying above that price. Right. So that's the impact for them and I think they won't have to do as much with giving away appraisal contingencies, finance contingencies, inspection contingencies. So that's the good news for the buyer. They can, you know, make more realistic offers that make sense. And real estate always a good investment in your in your opinion. Always. I mean, yeah. historically, in the long run, real estate is a tried and true investment. Wonderful. Well, yeah. if somebody wants to get in touch with you, Maria, how can they go about doing Maria that? MariaRamer.com. Easy enough. Yep. Good to see you again. Thank you, you so much. Thanks so much, Jordan. And if you'd like to see this segment again, just head to our website, firstcoastliving.net.